Welcome back students. In this video, let's talk about Fisher projections. Fisher projections are a way to draw compounds that was supposed to be easier, but we really struggle with. I remember being a student and probably not understanding these at all whatsoever. So let's try and make it easier for you. The first thing that I have drawn here on the left is just a plain old representation of a carbon that is sp3 hybridized that has four different groups attached. So a chiral carbon. If we take this and go through a series of rotations, we can end up with this structure here. And this is a Fisher projection. When we look at this Fisher projection, it's drawn as if those carbons are 90 degree bond angle, but you know that they are not. What's happening in this Fisher projection is the bonds that are horizontal, those ones are actually wedge. So if I draw this, I'm going to draw the structure that I have boxed in blue in such a way that I'm showing that these bonds are still 109.5 degrees. So you take the structure over here, let's call it A on the left, you go through a series of rotations and you're going to need some visual practice doing this. Um, I take the H and the OH and just kind of turn them in such a way that they're flipped up and then over and then I'm looking down at them. But I have a decade of practice doing that. And so you probably need to grab your molecular models to practice doing that. Then what you get is structure B here, where the H and the OH are coming up at you, and the CH3 and the CO2H are going behind the plane of the page. So that we don't have to draw a bunch of wedges and dashes all over the place, we draw what I have boxed in blue, which we'll call C, and that is a Fisher projection. One of the keys for Fisher projections is wherever you see just like a cross here, that is a chiral center. They're just automatically telling you that that's a chiral center. Over here, this CH3, that's not drawn as a cross because that carbon is not chiral. Same with this carbon down here, it's not chiral. When we look at Fisher projections, we want a way to figure out the R and the S designation for those chiral centers. And the easiest way to do this is by the path that I'm gonna show you here. Now, I just have to say, I did not come up with this. This is from someone on Chem Libre, which is just beautifully organized. If your lowest priority group is attached to the vertical position, remember the vertical position is pointing up and down, that means your lowest priority group is pointing away from your eyeball. Because what we just drew on the prior page was that the bonds that are vertical are dashed, and then the bonds that are horizontal are wedged. So we have an OH here, an H here, a bromine here, and a CH3 here. Instead of us trying to take what I just drew and you know mentally flip it, what we can do is remember that if the lowest priority group, which is an H and this particular example, is on a vertical position, it's automatically pointing away from you. And when it's pointing away from you, you're gonna go through that process of number one priority to number two to number three and see which direction we're moving. Let's go ahead and assign some priorities here. Bromine is going to be priority one, oxygen will be priority two, carbon will be priority three. If we go from one to two and two to three and back to one, see how we're going in that clockwise direction? That means that this configuration is going to be R. If we were going counterclockwise, then the configuration would be S. Now, this is if your lowest priority group is on a vertical position, which honestly does not happen very often. So what if it's on a horizontal position? Here, what I've done is rearranged this molecule so that my lowest priority group is on a horizontal position because that's going to be pretty typical. Remember that the vertical positions are pointing away from you, and those horizontal positions are pointing at you. 
Now, if your lowest priority group is horizontal, essentially all you're doing is you're changing your perspective, which means instead of looking at it so that your lowest priority group is pointing away from you, your head is over here and you're, point, you're looking the other way. So you've just flipped your perspective and all you need to do is flip the configuration. What I mean by this is if we find our lowest priority group on a horizontal position and we go through the process of priority one, priority two, priority three, and we go one to two, two to three, and back to one, and we're seeing this as uh, a clockwise position, this is really an S configuration. Clockwise is R, but if you're looking at it from the opposite direction that you're supposed to, meaning you're looking at it with your lowest priority group pointing to your face, then really this is S. So this is an S configuration here, even though we're going clockwise. That might be a really great opportunity for you to try some models, so because you might not really understand and see what I mean until you hold it in your hand. I want you to go through and utilize these ideas to figure out if the chiral centers are R or S. So let's go ahead and give it a try, and then we can come back and compare. All right, let's come back and start comparing some answers. For this first one, I went ahead and I numbered my one, two, and three priority groups. I noticed that my hydrogen was on a vertical position, which means that it is pointing away from me, which means my normal idea of clockwise being R still stands. So I went through and did one to two to three. I got a clockwise position, and so this is going to be R. I didn't finish the other example because I thought that it was very possible that you might have gotten stuck here. Let's look at this chiral center that I just starred first. It was probably easy for you to recognize that your oxygen was priority one and your hydrogen was priority four. And then you might have paused on figuring out what the other two attachments were that I'm gonna highlight in yellow. So what I did here was I highlighted these two carbons and recognized that carbon and carbon have the same atomic number, so I gotta go to the next set of atoms. I have an oxygen here that's attached not once but twice, and then a hydrogen. And then for my bottom carbon, I have an oxygen that's attached, a carbon that's attached, and a hydrogen that's attached, right? So an oxygen, a carbon, and a hydrogen. So which one takes priority? Well, this one. So that's two and that's three. So here, your priority four position is on a wedge. And because it's on a wedge, that means it's pointing towards your face. So if you go from one to two to three and back to one, even though you're going counterclockwise and typically counterclockwise would be S, because that lowest priority group is on a wedge, the absolute configuration for this is really R. Then for the next one, the bottom, uh, Chirality Center, honestly, I kind of want to erase everything that I wrote and then just start fresh because there's way too much writing on this um, particular compound. So I'm going to do that really quick. I'm just going to erase this stuff because I feel like if I just keep writing it, it's going to get all muddy and confusing. So I want to look at this carbon now. We can already see right away that this is one and this is four. And what we need to do is look at this carbon versus this carbon and compare them. So that top carbon is connected to an oxygen, a carbon, and a hydrogen. So let's make our list there, oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen. That bottom carbon is attached to two hydrogens and an oxygen. And so we'll do oxygen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. What ends up getting priority is this one. So that's two and this is three. Again, your lowest priority group is on a wedge bond, which means it's pointing at your face. So when you go from one to two to three and back to one, this rotation that would normally be uh, clockwise and thus are, is actually you're looking at it from the opposite direction, so this is going to be S overall. 
I have one more idea I want to share with you, and that is the way that we're allowed to rotate Fisher projections. What I mean by this is when we have drawn enantiomers in the past, what we've done is after we've drawn the enantiomer, we've twisted and made sure that the two compounds did not coincide and thus were actually enantiomers. Or when we look at two compounds and we're stating the relationship, are these the same? Are these enantiomers? Are these diastereomers? We needed to pick compounds up out of the plane of the page and rotate them. Well, Fisher projections have very specific rotations that are allowed. Basically, all you can do when you're trying to look at a set of Fisher projections and decide what the relationship is between that pair, the only thing that you're allowed to do is essentially take this and put your hand on it. That's my hand. I'm not great at drawing. And then take this one and put your hand on it and then rotate it within the plane of the page. That's it. So you can take this and rotate it 180 degrees, and that's your only allowed rotation. You can take that CH3 that is here, and this one here, I'm going to highlight them for a reason, and that CH3 is going to end up coming up to the top of the page, whereas this one is going to end up coming down to the bottom of the page. And when we do this rotation, the hydrogen that we have here is now going to come down to here, and this bromine will be here, and boop, this bromine will be here, and this hydrogen will be here. That's the only rotation you're allowed to do. That's it. You can't do anything else. Why is this so important? Because when we look at pairs of enantiomers or pairs of diastereomers or pairs of Fisher projections that might be the same compound, students always get confused. I'm going to show you what I mean by an example on the next page. I want you to try this first. I want you to look at these two compounds and I want you to decide between the two pairs, what the relationship is. Are they the same compound? Are they enantiomers? Are they diastereomers? Let me know. Give yourself a moment and then we'll come back and compare. For the first one, I'm hoping that you said it was diastereomers. And the way that I would like you to see this is to recognize that there's no mirror image here. They have the same connectivity, but the way that the direction of the atoms are pointing are not the same, but these aren't the same or aren't mirror images because you have two bromines right here and one bromine here and one bromine here. So these are diastereomers. This one students usually do okay with. The next one is where your brain explodes a little bit. When you draw Fisher projections, where I'm drawing this dashed line, that's your mirror. And I remember being a student and seeing that mirror and thinking, that's the same compound, and they are not. Because that mirror is there to create the other enantiomer, and now what you need to do is take this compound and hold the top and the bottom within the plane of the page and turn it 180 degrees, because that's the only thing you're allowed to do. I remember when I was a student essentially like mentally folding a sheet of paper and you cannot do that. That's not allowed. You cannot fold along the mirror to decide if these are the same compound. You fold along the mirror to generate the mirror image. But in order to decide if these are the same compound or not after you've generated that mirror image, the only thing you're allowed to do is to take the top and the bottom with your hands and rotate 180 degrees. And when you look at them and you're like, well, crap, those do not coincide. Yes, I agree with you. They do not coincide. These are absolutely enantiomers. Great. Let's wrap up. In this video, we looked at Fisher projections. We determined R and S with Fisher projections. And you want to make sure that you can look at two compounds and decide what the relationship is between those compounds, no matter how those compounds are drawn. As always, thanks for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.